Welcome to the second module of the Lightweight M2M Academy. In this module, we'll dive deeper into the Lightweight M2M standard, recovering the mandatory objects as well as the security modes of the standard. Starting with the mandatory objects. So let's have another look at the image that you've seen before. For devices to connect to a Lightweight M2M server, it's required to implement three objects known as the mandatory objects. And these objects provide a baseline level of functionality that enables Lightweight M2M servers to communicate with Lightweight M2M clients, regardless of the specific use case or vendor. So the three objects are security, server settings, and device. So within the security object, the security mechanisms are defined, and it also contains the device's identity and the device keys. And as you will see in a second, it also contains some of the security configurations and also optionally the settings for the bootstrap server. So the server settings, specify the server address where the device connects to and also has the so-called lifetime of the registration. And finally, the device contains a large set of resources, including the device manufacturer, model number, firmware version, optionally battery level. And not all of these resources within that device object are mandatory, but a couple of them are including the device name. So let's have a look at the security layers of the standards. You don't need to be a security expert to create secure applications. You can simply follow the Lightweight M2M specifications and use the standardized implementations out there in the market to realize true end-to-end -end security. So by default, the Lightweight M2M data is sent over UDP and the, the transport layer is, is secured using DTLS or datagram transport layer security. So although UDP is the default transport layer, it can also be used with TCP. And when using TCP, the TLS or transport layer security mode is used. So this is about the transport layer. And optionally, you can in, implement an additional layer of security and for that, OSCORE is being used, or Object Security for Constrained RESTful Environments. And this security implementation encrypts the application payload of each message. Lightweight M2M provides several security modes, as defined in the security object with ID 0 and resource ID number 2. And the three most common ones are pre-shared key, certificate, and no sec or no security. The pre-shared key or PSK uses symmetrical encryption using the same secret key shared between the server and the client. Certificate mode has asymmetrical encryption using public and private keys. And the corresponding certificates need to be generated for both the Lightweight M2M client and the Lightweight M2M server. And this is a, considered a little bit more complicated to implement compared to the pre-shared key. And finally, the, the no sec or no security mode means that encryption and authentication are fully disabled and message, messages are passed in plain text over the network. And this is not recommended to be used in production environment unless end-to-end -end security is provided on a lower level, for example, using IPsec. Mostly this mode is used for development purposes when you want to quickly test or deploy a test application. So a good way to boost the security of IoT applications is by using the bootstrap server. And when using the bootstrap server, the device at first boot does not directly connect to a Lightweight M2M server, but instead it first connects to the bootstrap server and sending a so-called bootstrap request. And the bootstrap server in response validates these requests and once validated and accepted, it writes the information to the device about how to connect to a specific lightweight M2M server. And 
that includes the specific address of the Lightweight M2M server the device needs to connect to, as well as the security keys that are necessary to connect. And one of the key benefits is that the bootstrap server can be used to easily change the Lightweight M2M server over time, avoiding vendor lock-in, but also to rotate security keys over time. So once the device has all of the required information to connect to a lightweight M2M server, which can be either done by directly providing all the credentials to the device or using this intermediate bootstrapping server. But once that has happened, it can start registering itself to the lightweight M2M server. So it sends a register command after which the server responds with a validation of the registration. And once this process has been completed, the device is connected and can send telemetry data or device states to the server. But it also sends periodic updates. So the server is informed that the device is still alive and operating as it should be. So this was a very short video about the theory of mandatory objects, security implementations and the registration process. Make sure to also read the theory that comes along with this module and I'm wishing you all the best with the upcoming exercise.